Damon Runyon Theater. Once again, the Damon Runyon Theater brings you another story by the master storyteller, Damon Runyon. And this one, All Horse Players Die Broke. And to tell it to you, here is Broadway. Thanks. Well, it is during the race meeting at Saratoga. And one evening, I am standing out under the elms in front of the hotel with Sally Appleby. And the scene is as follows. Broadway, take a look at that guy. Which guy? Where? The one picking up news. I see now, what about him? It seems to me I know. You? Mm, I do not know. He's a pretty shabby citizen. No, I cannot place. Mm, neither can I. He looks familiar. Ah, well, this is neither here nor <laughs> With that, Sally walks inside the hotel. But I stay behind for a couple of seconds to take another look at the guy who is picking up newspapers and tucking them under his arm. It seems to me that his face is for me. Right then, I cannot place it. However, later I find out who it is. And what happens when I do is something I will never forget. And I will tell you about it in a minute. Back to the Damon Runyon Theater and the famous story, All Horse Players Die Broke. Well, it is after I have something to eat, and I am once again standing outside the hotel. I forget all about the old guy until suddenly I look over and see him standing next to me. He is looking at me hard and I begin to feel a little uncomfortable because I am sure this is going to be a touch. Then the old guy says as follows. How oh, is your luck been, Broadway? Pretty good. Wait a minute. You call me by name. <laughs> yes, I did. Don't you remember me? Let me see. Come closer to the light. Now do you know who I am? I am very sorry. Your face seems to slip my memory. Uh, that is, for the moment. For the last ten years, you should have said. Ten years? Look closer, Broadway. Yeah, yeah, sure. I don't know you. Uh, Fritz. It is Fritz. <laughs> How are you, Broadway? I am first rate, and you? Very well, thank you. I'm a bit older, of course. Oh, sure. Getting older is a habit. Nobody breaks himself up. Well, Fritz, how are you doing? At the moment, quite badly. Quite badly, Broadway. Uh. I take it the GGs are running out on you. Well, to tell the truth, I haven't been able to play so far this meeting. Ah, I see. Nevertheless, I expect to put down a few bets before the meet ends. Oh, sure. You know, this is the first time I've been in Saratoga in ten years. It is that long, huh? Tell me, Fritz, uh, where do you keep yourself for ten years? Oh, here and there, but uh, I had to come back to Saratoga. I, I had a feeling I should come back. Feeling? I, I do not know quite what you mean. <laughs> it's quite foolish, I suppose, but I had a feeling I'd find her. Her? Oh, I remember. Emerald M. Yes. Emerald M. You remember her? Oh, sure. How is she? I don't know, Broadway. I haven't seen her in ten years. Uh, but you expect to find her here? Yes. I, I don't know why, but I do. Sure. Uh, by the way, I am going to have something to eat, and... Uh... Isn't it rather late for dinner? Didn't you already have yours? Oh, I am a very late eater. And it just happens that today I pick a ten-to-one shot in the fifth, and I am feeling pretty good about it. In fact, I believe that when good luck hits, it ought to be spread around a little, huh? Thank so what... you, Broadway. I... I'll just have a cup of coffee. We go into the restaurant, and on the way in, I get to thinking about old Fritz. In his day, he is the best handicapper who ever looks at a form sheet. 
In fact, he makes more than a good living. He has more potatoes than anybody else in the business. Then he hits a bad spot and it gets worse. I wonder what happens to him. So does everybody else. Well, I find out when he is finished eating. I, I seem to have been rather hungry, surprisingly so. I meant only to have a cup of coffee. I do that myself sometimes, Fritz. In fact, just smelling food makes me hungry even when I think I am full. Yes, well, I insist on taking the check. Next time, Fritz. Well, all right. Next time. Perhaps tomorrow. That could be. It's good to see you again, Broadway. I haven't seen any of the old crowd for ten years. Yeah, we wonder what becomes of you. Oh, I ran into a streak of bad luck. A long one, huh? Yes. You know, there was a time when I could pick seven out of eight. I know. Many is the time the citizens take your word about it, Gigi. I can't explain what happened to me. However, that's by the boards now. Tell me, Fritz, where do you keep yourself? Oh, just any place here and there. I see. But uh, what about Emerald M? Emma? I'll find her here, Broadway. How do you know this? I can't explain that either, Broadway. I was in San Francisco, and I got the feeling that if I came back here, I'd come back to Emma. So you come back? Yes. This was the last place I saw her, spoke to her. Oh, do you have a fight? Not exactly. More of a disagreement, so to speak. Oh, sure. It's more of a disagreement. She is a beautiful doll. Especially when she is wearing all the emeralds you give her. She loved them. They were her favorite gem. I felt by giving them to her, I was was expressing my love for her. Especially if they are big enough. <laughs> You're a cynic, Broadway. Mm -hmm. But um, what about him? You really want to hear what happened? If you wish to tell it to me, yes. I'd like to talk to someone. I am a very good listener. Yes, I know. Well, it was ten years ago, just about the time I started the... The bad streak. Emma had come here with me, and one evening I returned to our suite. I'd had a rather bad dream. Fritz? Fritz, that you? Uh-huh. You're late. Yes, I had a few things to clear up. Paying off, for example? That's it. How much went down the drain today? Not much. How much? That dinner? Fritz, look at me. I always do, Emma. You're lovely. How much today? Twenty. Thousand? That's right. Twenty thousand dollars. Just like that. Well, it can't last this way, Em. I'm in a bad streak. It'll clear up. When? Soon. Fritz, I, I can't stand it anymore. I know, baby. Things are a little pinched, but... Please, no buts. Let's settle down, Fritz. Let's stop feeding all over the country from one track to another. Here, you'll need these. No, not yet. Take them. I gave them to you. Look, I know you haven't got $20,000 to pay off. But I have. No. I saw the manager of the hotel. Rather, he came to see me while you were out. Tell him to keep his nose behind the desk downstairs. I did. But first, I promised him the bill. I'll pay it. Take these, Fritz. I bought these emeralds for you. Keep them. Now, I've got some sure things lined up for tomorrow. I'm at the end of the bad streak, Em. You're not going to play tomorrow, Fritz. What? If you do, you'll never see me again. You're kidding. I'm a square. The way I make a living was good enough for you when everything was fine, but now that it's a little rough, you want to call it quits. I don't want to call anything quits. Until you find a better way of saying the same thing, this'll do. No, 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 Fritz. Look at me. Look. I don't care about myself, but, but look what this is doing to you. What do you mean? You've got yourself talked into believing you can't lose. You, you made everyone else believe it, even me. But the last few weeks have talked me out of that idea. You can lose, Fritz. You are losing. Oh, a few bucks. I've won more in a day I'm than I... am not talking about money. I'm talking about you and... and about me. I'm way behind you, Emma. I don't understand. Look at you. Your clothes. Well, what's clothes got to do with it? Unpressed spots. You you didn't even shave this morning. I didn't have time. That's it, Fritz. That's it. You didn't have time. You, you've got a fever inside you that makes you think you can get back all you've lost. I... 
Oh, I don't know how to say it, but I feel closed out. I'm I'm running in every race against every horse you bet on. And, and I always lose. You're tired. You wouldn't speak that way. Yes, I'm tired. Fritz, I love you. I, I married you. I want to keep you. <laughs> the odds against losing me are too big to figure, Em. What are the odds against you losing me? I've never figured them. Are you still going to play tomorrow? I have to. Then I'll post the odds. And Fritz, they're big against you. Very big. So that is what happens, huh, Fritz? Yes. And uh, do you play the next day? I played Broadway and lost. How much? I've forgotten that. Oh, I see. And you never see her again, huh? No. You figured that you will not go back to her until you make yourself a stake, is that it? That's it. Does she ever try to find you? I heard that once or twice she did, but I always felt that, that I should wait until I was able to go back to her with everything we had before this bad streak. Mm. But is that not liable to be quite a spell? I mean, well... I know. I know exactly what you mean, Broadway, that I'm finished, washed up, done for. I couldn't pick a winner if my life depended on it. Well, Fritz, that, that is not exactly <laughs> it. Never I... mind. You're not the only one who thinks the same. But I know different, Broadway. I do. And I'm very close to coming back. Very close to that and Emma. You seem very sure, Fritz. You'll see. Maybe tomorrow or the next day or even next week. But it'll happen. And it'll happen during this meet here at Saratoga where I lost everything. I'll get it all back. Sure you will. But um, uh, in the meantime, how are you fixed for potatoes? A little pinched. Okay. Here. Oh, no, no, please. Take it. It is only a fin. Alone. Just alone. You understand that, Broadway? Okay, just alone. Thank you. And I'll pay it back sooner than you expect. With that, we leave the restaurant. Fritz will not let me walk with him to where he is staying. I know it is for the reason that he does not have any place to stay. And as for my fin... I begin to regret that as soon as Fritz is out of sight. I know he will never make a comeback, and the fin is as good as gone. As they say, all horse players die broke, and Fritz is not an exception. But how wrong you can get, including me, is something for the books, and something I will tell you about in a minute. Now, back to the Damon Runyon Theater and the famous story, All Horse Players Die Broke. Well, I do not see Fritz again for two days, and I kiss that fin goodbye. Then I am at the track trying to figure out which horse will get me a few tours when I see Fritz. I walk over to him, and the scene is as follows. Broadway, hello. Hiya, Fritz. What is new? You lent me five dollars the other night. So I do. So I do. You uh, still have got it? No. As a matter of fact, I waited until today to bet it. Oh, look, Fritz. I give you that fin to get you on the inside track with some food and things. No, no, no. You Broadway, put everything you've got in a horse named Speed Cart. What? Speed Cart? Fritz, that horse cannot win a race if all the other nags are out the pasture in another state. I've waited until today when he's running. I handicapped him. I figured him to win Broadway. I know I'm right. Do you not think this is what is called wishful thinking? No. I haven't slept a wink since I saw you the other night. I've been waiting for a chance like this. You bet the five I give you on speed card? Yes. Okay. Goodbye, little Finn. It is nice knowing you for a while. He's 50 to 1. And that tells me how good he is. You don't believe me? Fritz, 
Once upon a time, you are a great handicap. You are able to just smell a winner the day before he runs. But now... I see. Well, you'll find... It. There they go. Watch, Broadway, watch. Speed cart will lay back until the quarter turn. Then watch. I do not even see him in the race. Number five on the outside. Yeah, on the outside. And, and last. I know. I figured him right. I know. They're almost at the quarter turn. Now. Now. Bring him up, boy. Bring him up. Run him wide and bring him up. He is running wide. Make your play for it, speed cart. Make your play. Look at him. Look at him. Fifth. Fourth. Third. Move, boy. Move. Move up. Fritz, do you play him to win, plays a show? To win. He is second in the stretch. Now, Speedcart. Now. Bring me back, Speedcart. Bring me back. It seems to me, Fritz, that you are 250 bobs better off now than you are a little while ago. And so he is. But I figure one lucky smack is coming to Fritz. However, he continues to smack all afternoon. A centipede who is called Marchesa pops down like a trained pig at 20 to 1. Then a caterpillar by the name of Merry Soul laughs his way home at 4 to 1. And when the day is finally over, Fritz is holding on to 13,000 bucks. He pays off the fin to me, and I do not see him for almost a week. Until one afternoon, I am sitting in front of the hotel when he comes up to me. Broadway, I looked all over the track for you. Uh, there are bad memories about me and my money connected with the track. I am recuperating. May I help you over this rough spot? No, thanks. Well, any time, Broadway, any time. Sure. Uh, how is your luck? At the moment, I have $100,000. <laughs> There must be something in the air that prevents me hearing you right. You say what? I've won a hundred thousand dollars. You, you have that much tall? Yes. Now, I wonder if you'd do me a favor. If anybody with a hundred thousand needs a favor, I am very anxious to hear what. Go into town with me. Not to the track? No. I have something important to do in town. Fritz, do you go cold on your luck? You figure enough is enough and you are laying off? <laughs> no. It's just that I have an errand which is very important. Please come with me. Well, all right. Where do we go? I'll show you. Come on. So, we go into town. And all the way in, Fritz is smiling to himself like he remembers something very pleasant. And when we are in town, he takes me to a big fancy jewelry store where the clerks wear fancy dress all day long. Then inside, the scene is as follows. Yes, gentlemen. May I help you? Yes, thank you. Do you have emeralds? Why, yes, but I... Uh... May I see some? Certainly. Just a moment, please. Emeralds, Fritz? Uh-huh. Emeralds. You see, Broadway, Emma loves them. And when I see her again, I want to be able to surprise her. Oh, I see. Here we are. Some quite nice stones. Reasonable. I asked for emeralds. Not bottle chips. I beg your pardon. But look at them. There isn't a stone in the lot big enough to see if it were fastened to the end of my nose. I'm afraid these are all we have in uh, this price range. Did I say anything about price? I said emeralds. You don't like these, sir? I don't like these. <laughs> Do my clothes fool you? Does the fact that my necktie is a little to one side color your judgment? Oh, no. No, sir. In which case, perhaps you can tell me what uh, this is? Uh, a thousand dollar bill. And this? And this? And this? I'm sorry, sir, but I I didn't realize what you meant when you said uh, emeralds. You've got a better idea now. Very much better, sir. How much do you plan to spend, Fritz? A hundred thousand. Your, your whole bankroll. Emma is worth it. You will leave yourself with no lining for your pockets. My luck is back, Broadway. Do you like these, sir? Better. But in the case back of you, aren't those emeralds? Oh, yes, sir, but uh, they're reserved. The lady who ordered them will call for them by 5 o'clock tomorrow evening. I want them. But, sir, the price is... Is what? $101,000. It seems a little foolish to tack on that one grand. Perhaps you'd like to look at them. A perfectly matched set. Necklace, earrings, bracelet, and two clip pins. 
beautiful. What do you think of them, Broadway? Personally, I think the row of diamonds around the bracelet is a little out of line. I'll give you $100,000 cash for it. Oh, I, I'm very sorry, sir, but the price has to be 101000 Mr. Favier, my employer, went to a great deal of trouble to match these stones. Besides, uh, the lady who ordered them... What if she doesn't come in by five tomorrow evening? In that case, sir, I think you'd be very happy with the set. All right. I'll see you at five tomorrow evening. Goodbye. Goodbye, sir. And uh, thank you very much, sir. Fritz, you are crazy. You do not have 101,000. I'll have it tomorrow evening at five. How? Ever hear of a horse named Caramia? Oh, sure. She's the favorite in the sixth tomorrow. She'll get me the thousand I need. Personally, I think Fritz is a little crazy. But all the way back to my hotel, he keeps talking about how Emerald M will hear about his luck and will come back to him, especially if he has the emeralds to give them. Well, he says goodnight to me, and I do not see him until next day at the track. Fritz does not bet a red penny. He waits for the sixth and Caramia. Now, the odds on this horse are one to five which means you have got to put up five to get one dollar. I speak of this to Fritz, and he answers. I know, I know, but it's a sure thing. The way it looks, everybody is betting, Caramia, and the price will not be worth looking at in a minute. I I don't think I'll play her to win. What? I, I can't take the chance. I'll bet her to show. But you know she will run better than third? Without a doubt, but there's the element of risk if I play her to win. Look, you give me winners in the other races. Why do you not bet her? Then you would have the thousand you need. Too risky. I... What are the odds now? One to twelve. And going down fast. I need that thousand by five this evening. Broadway, I can't let those emeralds go. Look, you do not have such a long time to place your bet. You know. Yes, yes, I know. Let me see now. I, I've got to make sure. So what are you doing? Checking my figures. Mm. And, uh, yes, carry is a sure thing. But it's not an easy thing to bet a hundred thousand. The whole hundred grand? Yes. My mind's made up. You have got about 15 seconds to get to the betting window. All right. I'll be right back, Broadway. Wait here. So Fritz leaves me to make his bet. I am naturally more than somewhat nervous, although I know that Caramia is a sure thing. So I wait five minutes. And while I am, I catch a look at a doll who is maybe pushing 40. She looks familiar. And I'm about to take another look when Fritz comes back. And his first words make me think of nothing else. It's done, Broadway. You get to the window in time? No, I I placed the bet with a bookie I ran across. You do what? Well, Fritz, you... He gave me one to a hundred. You are crazy. You put up a hundred grand to get one? I had to. That was the only way he'd take the bet. And you bet Caramia to come in third? Third. It's sure, Broadway. No risk at all. I hope you are right. But I know... Caramia. Caramia. I cannot watch this race. I have got to close my eyes. She's running well, Broadway. Just as I thought she would, holding close to the rail in third. I cannot open my eyes. She's moving up. Come on, Caramia. Come on, Caramia. Stay with it. She will. She will. I know she will. What happens? Is the race over? It cannot be. No. 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 Fritz, what is it? What happens? Broadway, look. Well, where is her jockey? Fritz, where is her jockey? She, she stumbled through him. Oh. I guess the element of risk was greater than I thought. Come on, Broadway. I got to pay off. It is like a dream. A very bad one. I see Fritz pay off. And he is broke again. Then we leave the track and are crossing the street. And the scene is as follows. I'll leave you here, Broadway. Huh? Uh, where are you going, Fritz? Oh, I don't know exactly. Oh, now, wait a minute. This is just a very bad break you get. Uh-huh. All horse players die broke. Die? So long. So long, Broadway. No, Fritz! No! Fritz! Fritz! Let me through here. Let me through. Let me through. Fritz! Fritz! You are hurt. Uh-huh. Somebody get a doc, quick. Never mind. Fritz! Em, Em, I knew you'd be here, Em. I knew. Oh, please, somebody get a doctor. No, Em, you, you came back here to me, huh? Uh, yes, Fritz. I, 
I came back here to you. Funny, I, I had the feeling I'd find you. I tried to get in touch with you t to tell you that... Oh, never mind. I, I almost made it in. Made? What are you talking about, Fritz? Ask Broadway, I... Oh. Fritz. Maybe you better go, Emma. I will meet you later at the hotel. I wait until they take Fritz away. Then I go back to the hotel. And what happens there, I will tell you about in a minute. say, I am back at the hotel in my room. I hear a knock on my door, and it's Emerald M. I let her in, and the scene is as follows. Hello, Broadway. Hello, Em. It is a long time. Yes. Uh, do I not see you at the track today? Yes, I... I went there because I... Well, for a memory, I guess. I see. But you do not speak to Fritz. No. Broadway, I tried to get in touch with him so many times, but my letters always came back. Yeah. But if you do speak to him at the track today, before he makes the bet, he would not lose that hundred grand. He bets it so he could buy you something. Buy me something? What? Where do you get those emeralds you are wearing? From the man who took his bet. You see, Broadway... That is what I wanted to tell him. I, I divorced Fritz five years ago. Divorced and married again. And so ends the famous Damon Runyon story, All Horse Players Die Broke. Listen in again next week for... The Damon Runyon Theater. The Damon Runyon Theater with John Brown as Broadway is directed by Richard Sandville and the story is adapted for radio by Russell Hughes. Vern Carstensen is in charge of production. This is a Mayfair production. Mm -hmm.